Welcome to the PBC 2020 NBA Draft Remote Film Room. My name is John Chepkevich, Director of Scouting for the PBC, and joining me today is All Mountain West Wing, Justinian Jesso. What's going on, Jay? Hey, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Of course, man. Good to have you. Hope you're holding up okay up in Spokane. Uh, you know, holding out through this uh, quarantine and uh, you able to get some shots up. You got access to a gym? Yeah, yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine ways for sure. <laughs> okay, nice. Well, you know, I know for you being a senior, it's unfortunate to have these unusual circumstances now as you're starting to try to navigate the beginning of your professional career and all this yeah. uncertainty in the pre-draft process with the lack of workouts and whatnot. So, in light of that, wanted to kind of take this opportunity to do something different here and sit down, delve into your tape, and maybe talk from the top about some of the strengths you bring to the table as a prospect, some minor areas to brush up on, and ultimately how your game translates to the professional level. Yeah, for sure. Sounds awesome. All right, let's do it. First, we'll hop into your offensive strengths. And what particularly stands out is uh, your off-ball sh movement and uh, shooting off of movement, right? And at your size, what are you, like 6'6", six, 6'7"? Six, six, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with that kind of size out on the wing and ability to be so efficient from three uh, in a variety of ways, I think that immediately can add some value at the next level. So we'll start this clip here against UNLV. It looks like your primary action there kind of got thwarted with this guy, you know, really being up in your grill and preventing you from even catching the ball. Uh, is that something that uh, you saw happen a lot throughout the year as teams started to realize like how much of a threat you were from deep where they trying to prevent you from even getting the ball at all out on the perimeter? Yeah. Um, especially when, Teams could sense there is a set play coming, and it was for me. Um, I mean, obviously, this deep into the season, season into the conference tournament, these guys had all of our plays scouted out. So, yeah, I mean, he's just denying that uh, swing. But honestly, it doesn't even matter because the play is going to go back that way anyway. So right. I just tell him, I just tell him to throw it back there, and there's a little double stagger, and come off and shoot it. Yeah, I and mean, that's good recognition by you to not try to like force something there at the beginning. You know that you're going to get your chance later in the play. And yeah. coming off these stagger screens seem to be like one of your favorite situations here. You catch this pretty fluidly, get your hip squared toward the rim. And then this is pretty close to NBA range here and just money. So, uh, do yeah. you. I'd imagine that you became such a good shooter at the by just repping out all these off movement threes in practice, right? I'm sure that you particularly key in on being able to put it up quickly and accurately from a variety of different ways from beyond the arc, right? Yeah, especially uh, with the plays we had in our system. I mean, like probably the last five, six weeks of the season, like that was all my workouts where it's just like that play what we call the shark was just that little double stagger coming to my right. Yeah. And this player about to see Vandal, um, it's just a quick little pin down. So like all those type of shots, like you said, off ball movement coming up, uh, little pin downs and screens, like that was the majority of like the shots I was practicing um, the, during the season this year. Yeah, and it seems like uh, sometimes guys will try to get a little physical with you too to prevent you from being able to make a clean break for the ball. Like here, this guy is holding on to you right there. Uh, did you see that yeah. happen a lot too? Did guys try to combat you with a lot of hand checking and holding and grabbing to make sure you couldn't get around screens and get off these clean threes? Yeah, all the time. And uh, I think that's like some I struggle with like my freshman year and you know that summer I definitely like worked on shaking guys playing a little you know initiating physicality with them uh before I came off the screens and stuff so like I mean that little hand fight whatever you want to call it yeah. like that's something I'm used to you know so um yeah it's definitely something I worked on and just getting them off the screens yeah yeah, for sure. The hand fighting was great. And you do a really nice job of navigating the screen, staying close to the man to make sure that you can create enough space for this look here. Yeah, I mean, in that instance, he was kind of top blocking. So, I mean, if uh -huh. RJ, RJ even gets like a little piece of him, it's over. You know, I'm going to get a lot of separation. So yeah. um, that, was a that was a great screen by him. Great play by him. Yep. 
And that was in a key moment in the game too, right? There's a minute left in the game. You're up by three. This is sort of a dagger, right? Just a huge moment right there. You see you pumping your fist afterwards, all fired up. Yeah, I mean, we had been down 20. We were down 20 at the under four in this game. So <laughs> greatest comeback of – I remember you know, that game, yeah. Yeah, greatest comeback in school history. So that was definitely a big shot, and I was excited to hit it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. All right, moving on to the next one here. So here we see it. you kind of clear through to the opposite corner here. And then I don't know how you even caught that ball, but then even after the catch to kind of have the wherewithal to like uh, be able to square yourself up and get up a shot. I mean, it's pretty crazy. So do you want to maybe talk me through, I guess, if we bring this back to the top of the play? Um, yep. Like what's happening here and what causes you to kind of clear through and relocate to that left corner? Yep. So they're playing an ice coverage. RJ does a good job. Pops back out. Um, we have a three side. That's what we call a three side. Um, when I'm kind of stacked on top of the corner. So I just cut through a uh, litho cut. Uh, we call it. Okay. Um, good ball movement. Ray J gets a good drive. DA has a good cut there. Uh, good C cut. And then obviously Ray J sees me, you know, pass isn't great, but at that point I had hit like, four in a row <laughs> yeah. uh, before this, you know, I was, I was feeling pretty good. And so, yeah, it's a bad pass, but um, you know, we do a drill as well with uh, one of my coaches called bad pass drill. And so it's like stuff like that. And so, I mean, it's just natural um, at that point. And obviously hitting three or four in a row before that uh, helped me, but yeah, that's kind of how that play worked out. And um, maybe could have thrown it to Hobbs wide open on the wing there, but <laughs> decided to just let it fly. Hey, if you were feeling it, got to put that up, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that that's interesting, the bad pass drill. You know, I, you see some of these, you know, workout videos in the summer of these guys working on yeah. goofy-footed shots and off-balance shots. It's interesting that you do a bad pass drill, too, and it, you can see that it definitely paid off here. Yeah, it's all about just catching, getting your feet set, and getting to a nor normal rhythm uh, even after that pass. Yeah. Now this one, you know, the previous clips were all off ball stuff, right? But this one wanted to get a little bit of a understanding and kind of highlight how you can do some stuff on the ball too. So you set up this little, there's a little back screen there and then it comes straight into a pick and roll action for you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I guess to you, when you get a big to switch on you in the pick and roll, do you have like, it set in your mind that you might be able to shake them and create some space for your pull up three? Uh, maybe not shoot a pull up three, but the goal is to test their feet and try to get downhill. So, yeah. um, we, I mean, they were switching one through five this whole game. Uh, yeah. And, you know, Wetzel, I mean, he's a good defender, no doubt, but sure. he's still like a big guy. And so, yeah, I mean, I just try to get downhill to my left hand and I saw his hips turn, you know his hips completely turned. So it's just a quick little step back into a, to a three. And I had, uh, I mean, I had a couple threes on big switches early in the first half. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking when I see a big guy is just like test their feet and get downhill. You don't want to settle, which is something I've done early in the year is just like settle way too much. So, uh, we did a good job of working on that, uh, during the season, just practicing getting downhill. And then from there you make a read of whether to keep going or step back. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this one, you read it perfectly, get them off balance, hit that nasty step back. And what you were talking about before, I guess, about, you know, getting downhill and, uh, you know, making some improvements in that area. I think that's what we'll hit in in this next section and improvement area. I wanted to give, yeah. you know, one quick little highlight here to your ability to just knock this down in transition. This is ridiculous confidence right here. I mean, I guess – you know, you guys are down quite a bit and you need to start coming back. So understandable that you're taking this, but the, to have the confidence and ability to pull up and transition like that, you know, that's definitely encouraging as well. Yeah, no, that's a shot. I'm definitely comfortable with pulling up and transition on the left side. Yeah. So now we're going to move on to uh, improvement areas and, what we were focusing on was your ability to sort of drive and take some physicality on the way to the rim, which is an area that I think you have shown some improvement in yeah. uh, where you could still continue to grow. Right. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt. That's one of my biggest things I'm working on right now is just like getting downhill and really having like a, uh, 
just a just getting comfortable with getting into the paint and making decisions out of there. Um, and you can see as a, in the last two, I'm kind of just like, like I'm able to get there, but I'm I'm just not comfortable like with a shot or um, anything in there. You know, I'm kind of just throwing up stuff. So yeah, that's something I'm definitely been working on. Uh, you know, I had the ability to go by guys just because they're afraid I was gonna shoot, obviously. Right. But you know, after that, it's like get to a float or get to a you know, inside hand finish or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, right here, like, you know, I should go by, get into his body a little bit and maybe just give him a little bump or step back or bump into a spin or something. Like that's something else I've been working on is just seeking out contact and, you know, closing that gap when I drive so I can like bump him and get space for a shot and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. And I think working up on that stuff, the explosiveness and, physicality will also help you as a passer and driving kicks too, right? Because then if this guy felt more like you were a threat at the rim, maybe he has to help out even more to the help line here and you can just kick this out for a wide open three, right? So there's like multiple facets of, you know, mm -hmm. just slightly improve your physicality and getting to the rim and be more of like a gravitational threat when you get in the paint and collapse defenses you'll be able to hit these yeah. easy driving kicks, especially in a more well-spaced NBA, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, teams probably this year are like, you know, make him go finish, <laughs> make him go to the rim and like kind of just stunt and don't help off your guys. So yeah, yeah. absolutely, you're right, in, you hit it right in the head. Yeah, so, you know, I think that's something that, you know, you definitely have shown some improvement, can continue to improve. And, you know, once you get into a professional system and you know you're not focused on school anymore you're a full-time pro have the yeah. professional strength and conditioning programs like seems like definitely something that you know you could make some tangible quick improvement on in that environment right yeah for sure and that's the thing i feel like i haven't even you know i had a good career obviously but like i feel like i haven't really scratched the surface yet of what i can really do so uh, I'm excited about that for like the resources at you know whatever level I play at next year. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So now we're going to move on to the defensive side of the ball. And I think that what particularly stood out in digging through your tape on this end is how smart you are of an off ball defender and like team concepts, help side defense, making. Moves. So we'll start yeah. this first play here. Get a little, little switch out at the top here. And then here, you want to maybe just, I guess, at this point, as this pick and roll is developing, you want to maybe talk through what your read is right now. Yeah, so obviously the roller's wide open. We hedge on the right side. I don't know if that would be the right side of the court or whatever. But, yeah, we hedge on that side. And so my job is the X. So yeah. I got to help on the roller. And so I just I got to hang in there for a little bit and at the same time be ready to get back out to my man. So I'm hanging in there. He's throwing it back. Get back to my guy. I uh, said another one. Now it's my job to tag. <laughs> so I do that and yeah. good good skip by him and keep playing it. OK, so now he has the ball. I'm supposed to be at the midline and I kind of drop down, uh, cover the help guy and get the steal. So. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just about really moving job to job on defense, to be honest, and getting uh, getting your positioning right. Yeah, exactly, and that's why I wanted to highlight this one is because it hits on multiple multiple facets of you understanding your particular job in that situation, doing it, and then reading and reacting and getting to the next spot. Right, you make multiple good reads here, multiple tags, multiple help side reads, ultimately force the turnover in the end hustle to get the ball just a really nice all-around defensive possession there and you guys are up 23 to 4 right it'd be easy for you to not be diving on the ground after this loose ball up by 20 less minutes into the game but i like to see that as well yeah it wasn't the greatest team but you know whatever yeah, <laughs> yeah regardless of the circumstance still putting forth that effort it's definitely something people will notice yeah so this yeah. one here, kind of some on-ball stuff, right? Fighting over the screen. Now you've backed into help again as well. And yeah. then you recover to this and get a block shot. So I guess we can start this one at the top again as well. And maybe, you know, I liked how you kind of just spoke through all your reads on that last play. So if we start this one back at the top, you want to maybe just talk me through what you're thinking throughout this possession? 
Yeah. Uh, so they run a, I, don't, I wouldn't call it a Princeton style offense, but it's similar to the Air Force. So a lot of back cuts, a lot of like actions like those where they kind of screen and back cut. Yeah. So I fight, have to stick with my man uh, on that, fight over the screen. And right here, um, you know, Marcus obviously helps on the post feed, which uh, we were fronting. So it's my job right now to play two guys because yeah. we got. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like splitting two, uh, seeing where he's going to throw the ball, reading the offense. Yeah. Throws it out to, you know, my guy. He's a driver first, so I kind of close short. He's a lefty, so I know he's going to want to go inside hand, and then, yeah, he just blocked the shot. Yeah, and this particularly stood out to me that how you, you know, how you said close short, because a lot of times on this particular pass right here, a lot of guys are going to want to try to jump it and make the steal right and maybe be yeah. late on it, still just kind of fly past and give a false impression of hustle and kind of put themselves yeah. out of the play. But you yeah. stay disciplined and end up closing out, knowing that he wants to attack the closeout and just get back and recover. So just a really smart play by you there. Yeah, just got to know your personnel for sure. Yeah. So um, now this one. See, so you're on this wing here. Guy tries to back cut you. Yep, a little pin down and then just active fat. That's like I've been watching uh, a lot of Kawhi. Uh, what else have I been watching? Um, obviously, the MJ documentary. And, like, you just watch all these great defensive players, and their hands are always just, like, yeah. active everywhere. And so, like, you know, you can just get a couple easy ones like this, you know, like – wasn't like I was in super great position or anything, but it was kind of a lazy pass. And I just get my hand in there and force a turnover. Exactly. Just taking advantage of those minor opportunities where the offense might be slightly aloof for not paying attention. And, you know, you do the right thing, get your arm out there and make a play. It's pretty simple, but you know, <laughs> in the NBA, these guys aren't going to make too many uh, yeah. mistakes like this or I think probably they're going to be a little more buttoned up. So being able to take advantage of any of these that come your way is going to be huge. And just did a nice job on this one. Yeah. So after we watch this turnover one more time, move on to the next play. Yeah. Yep. So this time I think you get switched on to a big here and you start fronting him. Uh, is that something that uh, is, you know, a part of your team strategy specifically, like when you switch and you get on a big to front, or is that you specifically kind of knowing personnel and like knowing that that's your best move in that situation and that you'll have help side here? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Uh, this is Lavelle Scotty. He's, he's a good forward, um, has a good post game. So like we wanted – this game, especially with me on him, uh, we wanted to front and like not let him catch in the mid post area. So I'm keeping the ball out right there, um, not trying to let him get any catches close to the basket. And then if you keep playing, it's a pick and roll. So got to tag again. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and then close out, drive. Good help by RJ right here. And yeah, but yeah, so I guess it's a little bit of both, just knowing like you want to keep it out of this guy's hands uh, to avoid mismatches. And um, yeah, like I said earlier, just knowing your personnel. Yeah. You just did all the right things here, right? Like fronting him there takes away their primary look here, force them into a secondary action. And then you tag the guy. And then here you just make them super uncomfortable with this trap and force a turnover. So again, hitting on a lot of small things in one possession that ultimately lead, lead to a good result for you guys. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, right here, just, uh, I forget his name, but knew he was a shooter. He had hit a few in this game. I think this is late in the game. So yeah. just like not trying to let him get anything off. And then as soon as he like puts his head down, just uh, back up and get ready to guard. So um, fortunately he's in like kind of a tough spot right there, deep corner yeah. and, I mean, so he really has nowhere to go. And, yeah, it's just reading the ball right there. It didn't overhelp and keeping the guy in front. Yeah, exactly. That, the not overhelping is what stood out to me there, right? Like you knew personnel. You kind of stunt a little bit, forced him to give it up. And then, again, you are disciplined in your closeout here. You don't leave your feet. You don't go crazy on it. Force him baseline into a turnover there. 
put them in a tough spot. So once yeah. again, it's all around good defense, good reads, and uh, smart plays there. Mm-hmm. So the last thing that we're going to touch on now are your <laughs> – see you're already shaking your head. Yeah, this one was tough because I felt – I mean, I felt like I was playing good D on this one. Um, yeah, if you keep, like, rolling it, like, <laughs> I know he's going to drive right. So I – Right. You play great. I touch, I touch his ball. <laughs> I even get the ball, and then he's – I mean, he's a bully, so he's just, like, 250 pounds, and yeah. he just kind of backs me down. But um, – yeah. sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that's ultimately pretty good defense when it's all said and done, right? Like it's it's unfortunate that this first little uh, time you cut him off here and get a hand, you don't end up getting the steal going the other way, just unlucky bounce. But yeah. ultimately what we end up touching on on these clips here is just, you know, physically, yeah. right? Like once he gets you kind of down low, he forces the action, gets a fairly easy look for him, right? And, yeah. you know – once you get up to the next level, you're going to face a lot more of this and just have to be able to hold up in some of these situations against some bigger wings and uh, some bigger forwards. Right. And then there again, not bad defense either, but the main point of these being kind of similar to the offensive side of the ball, just like do whatever you can to kind of like prepare yourself for increased physicality at the next level will go a long way through it. I think. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's a big weight room thing, I think, especially, I mean, all those clips were kind of low post uh, type baskets, and, you know, that's, yeah, that's probably my biggest thing on defense is just bulking up and getting stronger in my hips and core just so, like, guys can't just bring me down there and back me down. Yeah, and you have really quick feet, right? You know what to do. You know your personnel. You know what they want to do. So just adding that extra element there, I think that'll make you a super well the defender and put you in better spots to just even prevent, you know, one or two easy buckets like that per game, right? Yeah, for sure. You know, it's gonna it's gonna be a process just adjusting to the bigger, stronger guys and uh level competition at the next level. But um yeah, you know, I think I can get there for sure. Yeah, I agree. Just putting in that work and you know making those minor improvements on the margins will go a long way. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So that wraps up all the film there. Uh, really enjoyed running through that with all of you and kind of hearing your perspective throughout the duration of all of those plays and all the minor aspects of each and every single one. That was pretty enlightening and really, you know, I think would be encouraging to an NBA team to hear how you th- think through the game like that. So before we uh, wrap up here, Kind of wanted to just give you a platform now, you know, since you're not able to actually get to these teams, practice facilities and do a pre-draft workout there in an in- intimate environment and kind of get pitted up against other cross like you normally would. Wanted to just give you the chance to kind of speak directly to teams. So who is Zinni and Jessup? And if a team were to bring you into their organization, what can they expect from you both on and off the court? Yeah, I mean, I don't like to – talk a ton about myself, but I think if, you know, I come to any organization, like they're getting a really hard worker, a uh, guy who's going to do their job in uh, every day, a uh, smart player, unselfish player. And I think a guy who's just going to help his team win really. And that's at the end, end of the day, that's, you know, I think what most teams want is just people who are going to help them win and produce 